welcome everybody. Um, I'm really happy to see all of you in today's webinar on Mahara 2004. And I'll be taking you on a journey around um, some of the highlights uh, that we were able to implement in Mahara 2004 in our release that we made at the end of April, on the 29th of April this year. And that's why the version is called 2004, because it stands for 2020 and the month April. Mahara is released twice a year, uh, once in April and then in October. And therefore, we always have 2004 or 2010 or 1904 and 1910. So this time around, we'll have a webinar. Typically, we have some sessions here in Wellington in New Zealand. However, with everybody working from home, it's also actually a really good trial uh, to have these sessions online and um, make them more accessible to people, no matter where they are um, dialing in from in the world. And today we have a really good um, international audience again. Um, primarily from Europe, but also some fellow Southern Hemispheric um, people here. What I'm going to do today is, uh, to, as I said, take you through a number of the new features for Mahara 2004. And we'll start with features that um, you can see when you log in as, um, as a portfolio creator. We look at a couple of features that make life easier for the administrator helping um, portfolio creators. And then we are going to top everything off with a number of features that make life easier for all the administrators amongst you um, to automate a few of the processes so that you don't have to be involved in mundane tasks so much anymore. But before we can get to all of these features, um, there's a lot, there's lots of things to say uh, to everybody who's contributed to this release. It is not only the developers that are working on Mahara, but it is the entire community. So at the top over here, we've got our translators that are amazing um, all the time in making Mahara accessible to different um, regions in the world, um, translated into many different languages and therefore give people the chance whose native tongue is not English to work in their own languages. We also have graphic designers that make Mahara pretty, front-end developers that um, implement all that prettiness and um, give us really good interfaces, support people, a lot of them amongst you, who um, give support to students, instructors, and also can be seen in the community supporting other community members, as well as event organizers, testers, code reviewers, and last but not least, um, also people who and organizations that sponsor features that can go into Mahara. Because through that sponsoring, new features can be implemented or existing features can be expanded. There are a few others also here in our community, amongst them students, teachers, instructors. Uh, the security guard is there to make sure that there are no security vulnerabilities in Mahara. And um, yeah, just people in general who help out in the community and then also the ones in black. Um, in our case, those are the system administrators that make sure that our entire community infrastructure is always up and running smoothly. And so while we typically only see the developers front and center for anything that goes into Mahara because they have the code contributions, it is many, many more people that um, participate in a release and actively contribute to make every version of Mahara that we are releasing better. And now it's, we have the opportunity uh, to share with you the highlights of Mahara 2004. So let's not delay any further for that. And I'll um, start with features that you can see as a regular um, portfolio creator. So in this case here, you see that my Mahara instance is actually in German. 
Now, if I wanted to change that in all the previous versions of Mahara, I either had to log out and go to the language switcher or go to my um, settings page, then find the setting for the language and switch it. That can be quite cumbersome, especially when you do have a lot of languages installed on your site and you do know that your students and faculty members want to switch quite quickly between them or might need to because they prefer a different language than you think is the predominant one. And now, thanks to um, one of our clients here in New Zealand, we've had the um, opportunity to, imp um, to implement a language switcher that just sits where the rest of the navigation is so that I can very easily move between one language and another. So all the languages that are installed on Mahara are visible to me there. What we don't do yet, though, is uh, translating the content. So you will have seen that the interface changed, but any of the um, of the titles or any text that you are entering into your Mahara instance is still going to be in the language that you entered. Translating text on the fly is something still a little bit different than translating the interface and therefore that um, was not able to be done this time around. But maybe at some point we'll have the possibility to also look into that feature. Now, speaking of a large Mahara instance, some of you are on uh, one of those where there are multiple organizations, um, then it is important to, of course, find the people you are looking for. When we are on, a, um, on the sharing screen, um, it is already possible to find and search for people um, directly by their name. What we have been able to do this time around um, with, a, with funding from Waitemata DHB here in New Zealand is also make it so that you'll see people from your own organization first and only then people from other organizations that share the same Mahara site. Therefore, it is easy and very nice to narrow down the searches, especially when you have five John Smithers and Jane Wilsons um, in the organizations, because then it is easier to narrow those down um, without needing to necessarily have a profile picture or also just know their email address or go to their profile and find out more about them. So this is a really nice little feature that makes it more convenient um, to find people. And in each release of Mahara, we want to implement um, a number of different things. And that is new features that extend the functionality of Mahara um, and also new usability or in usability improvements. And sometimes those can be very small, but can have a huge impact because people don't need as many instructions um, or they just know where something needs to go. Um, they can find their way around more easily and do not get frustrated um, because they can't find something. And so here it is just easier to find people directly. One organization change that we have made, also very important for those especially that um, have been on Mahara for a long time, so I'm kind of really looking at you with the eight years of Mahara experience, uh, Catherine, and um, others with their six years and plus, um, is that you can have a lot of groups on your site that you might be a member of. And um, you can, of course, search for groups and therefore find them quite quickly. However, um, can some... I come in here? Sure. Yes. That's a question. Um, I see that even uh, in uh, Mahara 20 of uh, 10, no, 4, what is it? Uh, it's now still um, with all my groups. That leads to a lot of confusion every time people are not so familiar with Mahara. Because what they have to do is when they find, when they are looking for a group that is not your, mm -hmm. uh, your themselves, you know, that's not their group, um, they try to type in and they search and nothing happens. Mm -hmm. So you have to tell people again and again that it's that they have to click on the uh, arrow and go to all groups. Mm 
Mm -hmm. I find that I find that tricky because if you use Mahara, you already know how to do it. If you don't use Mahara, you don't very much. You don't have a group. Mm -hmm. So I prefer all groups as a setup. And for those who already know it, all my groups, just as a suggestion. Yeah. Thank you. And um, that is certainly something that we can look into either for the platform itself or that one of your administrators can change in the code to make uh, the default setting um, just all groups rather than all my groups. What I wanted to show you today is um, how you can narrow down the number of groups that you see when you are a member of groups. And that is where a feature from PH Burn in Switzerland comes in handily um, because we implemented labels. And the labels allow you to, um, to label your group or to tag your group, give your group a keyword um, that represents the group. And that label is entirely your own. Nobody else sees it. Um, you can decide how you want to organize the groups that you're a member of. And then with the help of these labels, you can narrow down which groups you want to see in this list of group or in this group overview list here. So in this case, we have um, group, human computer interaction and portfolio discussion. Now, if I go away to a different page and come back to that group overview page, then that filter is still applied. And that is really nice for the for a current semester or so when you really only might want to see the the current groups that you look after or where students are in and therefore don't always have to search for them and narrow the list down, um, but can see those groups very quickly. Now that same filter can also be applied here on the right hand side in the site block because that is then the quick access uh, to any of the groups. And you can set that in the preferences. Further down, display only groups labeled with. In this case, we've got uh, our Teroa. That is number one where you can set it. And then also on your profile page, if you decide um, you do want to keep the block My Groups, now you have the chance though to narrow it down to only the groups that you really feel like people should be seeing publicly in, in terms of knowing that you're a member of them. And that can be a different label or even a combination of labels um, that you can display here and just start typing a label and it will come up. And then it does a Boolean or so that it doesn't narrow down the search, but it expands it so that it shows every group that was labeled in this case test and also every group that had the label Aotearoa. Because if you want to go very specific, you can give very specific labels, but through this possibility here, you can see semester groups from this semester, past semester, um, without needing to rename them all the time. Kind of briefly staying on groups, um, as administrator, you have the possibility now to um, set default settings for a group. Because up to now you're always, and I'm in German again, so better switch back to English, very quickly done now with the language switcher, um, that when you are in groups and in the admin area, you can set the default settings for a group. And that is really nice when you do not agree with the default settings that we had set. Um, in the past, you always needed to go into the database and change the default value around so that you could have your own default settings. But of course, that is quite cumbersome to do. And so we had the possibility through one of our clients to make a change there. And um, just by switching or flipping switches here, changing the roles um, to the ones that you'd like to have, all the default settings that you would normally probably put into your instructions for your, um, for your faculty, you can set directly. And then of course they can still change those um, settings However, they don't have to change them first to the 
to the settings that you want them to use, but only need to change them when they want to have them differently. And so we know that some of these settings only work for uh, specific people, um, namely if they are um, institution staff or site staff or site admins. And so if a setting was set that only certain people with certain permissions can access, then it'll just be ignored for others and they get the default setting. And so now if we take a look, the open group is there, the role was changed to member and admin, friend invitations, and then um, I also turned on the participation report. And now you don't have to write as many instructions as you might have had to do in the past. Kind of going back to some other, a uh, couple more features on the, uh, um, on the uh, portfolio creator site before we head off to single sign on are that in the past we've always um, said when somebody wanted to export their portfolio which can happen because people change organizations or just want to keep a backup of their portfolios just in case that we always recommended well you should be doing an html export because then you don't need a Mahara instance in order to view your portfolio, but at the same time, we also recommend that you do make it um, leap to a export in case you do need to put it back into Mahara. Now, kind of, what well, was good to actually combine those two um, because they are all accessing the same files, so why not have them together? And if somebody does need to put it back into a Mahara instance, they can very easily um, upload the file. And as long as there's that leap to a file included, then the import will work. And now without students and faculty needing to worry or wonder about what do I need to do HTML? Why, why do I need leap to a? They can just create an export and um, Mahara does it all for them. We also have a third format included, the PDF export. That is a very new feature, which is experimental at this stage because it's a quite a big piece of work that went in and needs a separate or uh, needs additional software on the server, um, needs to be looked at in regard to um, performance also lots of different portfolios, big portfolios, small portfolios, what sort of artifacts are included um, so that we did want to make it available to the community so that you can test it and uh, can also give us feedback, try it out and see if it is helpful for you. Um, yet at the same stage, um, also still knowing that we will need to make a number of changes and um, still actively work on that big feature. But now, when we take a look at the export file that we've received, um, there you can see that the leap to a file is included. Then there is all the export info about the files that um, are in the portfolio um, used by the leap to a export HTML and PDF. Then the normal HTML export and also the PDF files. And so one PDF file represents one portfolio and that can be one page or one collection. If a collection consists of multiple pages, then each page within the collection starts on a new PDF page and therefore is easily accessible and can therefore also be turned in um, if an organization needs to receive a portfolio, but it should be done as PDF, then the PDF export can be sent. The nice thing about this PDF export in contrast to the print to PDF, which has been in Mahara for a while now, is that you can still access the artifacts so that you can still access the learning evidence via um, uploaded files, um, PDFs that might have been embedded, audio files, um, YouTube videos and such are linked um, because we are actually putting those files into the export. They come with the export so that you don't just get the flat PDF, 
but also the rich content that is behind it um, that you have in your portfolio. And so it is a really nice alternative to HTML, which some people um, sometimes still struggle with. And of course, um, does require a browser, um, whereas you might just want to upload a PDF somewhere. And last but not least, for some of those uh, more people-centered portfolio author features, one feature then it's kind of coming towards the end um, because it was one of the very last features that made it into Mahara is that um, we can now have cover images on the pages and collections overview page. So by now, you, most of you are probably used to our tiles here um, where you can see your portfolios, click on in, in order to get to them. But what is now possible is that when you go to the settings screen of a page or also of a collection, you can upload a cover image. And that cover image then makes it possible that your pages and collections page can look very colorful. Making it nice to distinguish between different portfolios, uh, especially if you are a very visual learner, you still have access to all the previous functionalities like the description, um, pages and collections are still there. Pages can also have in cover images and collections can have those. And what I also find the nice thing is that you can um, set up institution or site pages as well that can have these cover images embedded so that um, they make it over when the template is being copied. And that, of course, now opens up a whole range of other possibilities for us where we could use those cover images instead of just having a list of portfolios on the home page or even on, on the public page that we could now um, kind of pull out those cards, for example, make those visible. Um, the client for whom we implemented that feature uh, had already thought about um, also having it available on the group's overview page um, so that group home pages can receive cover images and in order to make the look and feel of the platform more attractive. So those were all features for portfolio creators. Now we are getting into an area of uh, Mahara 2004 that is a bit more administrative um, lightens the burden of um, all of you working on Mahara on a daily basis, supporting staff and students. And um, just are some really nice features to keep in mind, um, especially when you work with single sign on. So up to now, when you had single sign on on a Mahara site, you still always had your username and password. And then the SSO button was kind of pretty small. Um, and when it was the primary SSO method, then that was not really ideal because you always had to give more instructions. And so typically we had done a customization to turn that around, make the SSO button bigger. And for this release of Mahara, we had the opportunity to actually implement that nicely and consistently so that everybody can take advantage of that without needing to have a customization. And so now when SSO is turned on, the SSO button is prominently displayed and the username and password fields that are then typically secondary and oftentimes only used for administration purposes are kind of a little bit hidden. If you have more than one single sign on instance on your site, a second button can appear as well. And if they are even more than that, they can go to a third page where then everything is listed. Now, if I am a member of a um, site of a Mahara site where I have an account and I want to move to another institution that is also on that site, um, for example, in Switzerland, there is Switch Portfolio where lots of um, universities and pedagogical um, universities share a Mahara site. 
then it is kind of quite a bit big burden on the administrators to accept people into their institution and then in particular also change their authentication method because you could already always move between institutions. However, when you left one institution and went to, into another one, your authentication method changed. And so if the authentication method, of course, is um, single sign on, then that needs to be set up by an administrator. And so it was not very easy to move from one institution into another one. But that is now possible thanks to Switch Portfolio because you can move your account and ignore that message because we can just had an update i think so what i need to show you um, live demos can be quite interesting um, is that i can't move my account right now into that single sign-on institution and uh, therefore i can show you though a screenshot of that because we've just been on that uh, move page so the possibility there then is um, when you click on move account you can then select the institution um, to which you want to move to send a request you'll be asked to um, authenticate um, so that it's really ensured that yes you have an account in that other institution and then an email confirmation comes asking you really yes or you have asked that your account is moved do you agree and then the move can happen and you can log in with the new authentication method rather than the old one and the administrator did not have to do a single thing and um, that definitely saves a lot of time for them um, that they can use to advise students and faculty on how to work with their portfolios instead. Now, of course, we've been talking quite a bit of now already for a couple of features about um, the authentication methods. And so through single sign on, um, you do have the possibility to um, just a second to set up different institutions and um, set up that single sign on to make life easier in terms of um, also adding people to an institution which can be done um, pretty much automatically and um, now additional features make it possible for us to not just um, allow people into an institution, but to automatically also give them a particular role on the site. So that if there's an administrator who has an account in your institution and they are identified with a role as being an administrator, then they can have that role also on Mahara. And that role can be really defined to being an administrator in Mahara. Um, but that information doesn't come from Mahara itself, but it comes from that authentication method. Because especially at larger organizations, uh, there should always be one single source of truth, um, which means that updates only happen in one place and then everybody else just gets all those updates rather than making updates in um, many different applications because then nobody knows what's going on anymore. And so we support um, that, um, that thinking of the single source of truth and make it possible that um, teachers who are identified as teachers in the authentication method can automatically have teacher access in Mahara. Again, preventing you from needing to wait until everybody has signed in for the first time and then finding their names and moving them over into the staff um, column in Mahara and therefore yeah having more time available for other things um, that might be forgotten otherwise. Now there is also very interesting functionality here of the, the role mapping for auto group administration and uh, We've implemented that for the, um, for the case that um, sometimes people just need to have a support person in a group. 
And so this, if that role is turned on, then the person or the people that have that role in the authentication method will be added to every single group in the institution automatically. They cannot be removed from a group administrator. They also do receive all forum um, responses, which they can't get rid of, but they can uh, limit it so that they do get um, an email digest or just into their Mahara inbox. But they have instant access to the entire content of the group and can therefore support people really, really well with um, their knowledge. If you have multiple organizations on a site where you say such a monitoring role is necessary, then um, it can even be turned on that one role from one authentication method um, can administer and be available in all the groups on the site. But typically it would be set up just for one group. The other feature that um, is of interest then in this regard is also that you can now set up institutions automatically um, if they are all in one big IDP, one of those identity providers uh, for single sign-on. And that, for example, is the case here in New Zealand where all schools are in one big directory and um, can therefore be created very quickly on a Mahara instance. So an administrator only needs to set up the parameters and then as soon as a teacher logs in from a school in the South Island, for example, their school doesn't exist yet on Mahara, it gets created automatically because the teacher logged in and they also automatically can then um, receive teacher access in that institution and so on. And that is a really nice way of, again, automating a lot of the mundane tasks that administrators may need to do on a daily or semi-daily basis in order to make their life easier. Now, we are almost done with the new features. Um, the, uh, oops, sorry. There are also some other changes that we have made. Um, namely, we, in English, we turned users into people um, because the term user can oftentimes have quite a negative connotation. And so we wanted really to humanize the language in Mahara. And we are therefore calling people people or group members or portfolio authors and institution members. Account holders is kind of somewhere in between. It is a bit more technical and um, yeah, um, term that is a bit stepping back and not so personal. Um, but sometimes it is just necessary that we need something where we can't see people or persons, um, but still want to avoid um, the term user. It's typically only with third party integrations where we still have the term when it's um, around a technical integration in order to make it very clear um, what with the other end, what we are communicating with, um, because a lot of other um, software still use the term. Um, but we are trying to reduce it also in the language that we are, um, that we are employing and um, therefore on the interface of what people see, the term is not really be visible anymore, but might still be in a couple of places in the administration area. Now, besides all of these features, there is a ton more in Mahara 2004. Um, some smaller features, some really, really nice um, additions that just make life a little bit easier um, and that you can all check out also when you go to the Mahara manual, because as usual, they are documented there. And there is also a short version of this webinar um, that you can go through if you just like to find a quick, um, the quick reference uh, for what I've been talking about today. And of course, if you want to take a look at all of that, you can download Mahara and install it directly um, either yourself or if you have IT staff available that can help you with that. Um, and if you, have, um, if you work with a support company that um, maintains your Mahara site, then you can check in with them when the new version can be installed on your server and made available uh, to you. 
Now, with the arrival of Mahara 2004, Mahara 18.10 is no longer supported. So that was the version of Mahara that we released in October 2018. And um, that means that now everybody who's still on that version does not receive any security updates anymore. And um, we only support Mahara for a year and a half because we do want to bring out new features to the community, make new versions available, and also stay current with the software development um, of the libraries that we are using in Mahara. And therefore need to kind of stay in lockstep with uh, many of those. And um, therefore we are having a support for a year and a half because typically organizations upgrade once a year um, during the summer, depending on whether you're living in the Northern Hemisphere or in the Southern Hemisphere. And therefore that kind of does work quite well with the year and a half. However, because we do know that not everybody can upgrade um, as quickly as that at times, we do now have a premium service available for purchase, which is the extended security support. And that extended security support takes the support of a particular version of Mahara, in this case 18.10, and makes it available for another two years so that the support altogether can be three and a half years. And that means that um, organizations that are taking advantage of the extended security support um, will be receiving security updates of Mahara for their version that they are on. And the extended security support also exists for all the other versions of Mahara from 18.10 on and therefore extend that lifetime um, always for another two years so that it's altogether three and a half years of support. Um, if you don't need new uh, features in Mahara or simply cannot upgrade. It is also, of course, possible to backport certain new features to an older version of Mahara. Um, it depends a little bit of how involved that feature is that you'd like to have backported, but it is certainly possible to look into it and make a determination whether um, one of the features that I've shown you today could also go onto your Mahara 19.04 or 19.10 instance um, if you must or want to stay on that for a little bit longer, but would also like to take advantage of um, any of those new features that I've shown you. So please do drop me a line um, if you are interested in any of the new features to have them or if you'd like to extend the security support for your version of Mahara um, so that we can take a look and discuss that with you further. And now we've got time for your questions or comments because I'd definitely be interested to learn um, which of the features you liked best, uh, which ones you can't wait um, to try out yourself, and um, yeah, whether you can also see where some of those features might be able to go in the, in the future. And please do feel free to use the microphone. Looks like a lot of you have um, the possibility this morning or this evening. And yeah, look forward to hearing from you. Oh, Bernadette, I, I bet you, you are in probably a lot of groups and therefore that labeling will come in quite handily. Yeah. And Catherine, um, correct the um, PDF export, I think will be very interesting, especially to you in the UK. Um, because of the apprenticeship decrees where the um, where you do need to hand in kind of that proof but they don't really take um, leap to a export files or HTML files very well and uh, therefore that is certainly a possibility then for students to keep their live portfolio and hopefully also their lifelong portfolio um, in an instance where they can make changes very easily yet on the other hand also fulfill all their um, apprenticeship degree requirements.
Yes, and also in the other sessions, PDF export and uh, yeah, PDF export and the cover images were definitely um, amongst the the top end um, features that people wanted to explore along also with the labels. Yeah. Yes, export is always a big a big question uh, because people do move between institutions and organizations. And um, so sometimes we actually see people come back after three or five years and asking, hey, I've had my portfolio at university such and such such a long time ago. Um, were it still available? Can I still get it back? And so hopefully those universities still have an, a backup or even the portfolio life for the students to get back and extract their content or continue using it there. Yes, Catherine, the cover images will definitely help learners identify their portfolios. And um, what we are looking for in Mahara is really to implement more of those visualizations to make it easier to um, take in all that content and not just rely on text. And so that is a wonderful feature to that effect. Because especially nowadays where everything needs to go so fast, there is no time to read um, lots of um, portfolio titles, but it is much easier to identify one of those images. And um, exactly, especially when your portfolios are very similar, then you can distinguish them more easily. And insbesondere, uh, especially in academia, they are sometimes quite long titles. And so the a picture can help there because the yeah, picture is worth a thousand words. And what I also really like is that you can set it up already in the template and therefore provide students, students with that impetus and saying, hey, you can have a picture here because then they might think, ah, oh, I can have a picture here. Where can I upload my own and then change it out as well? And so right now, of course, that is um, only a feature that is available to individual students. Um, that they can put onto their pages and collections overview page. However, hopefully with time, um, we will be able to implement that also in other areas of Mahara um, to showcase portfolios there more easily. Okay, I think I'll stop the recording here.